This is the island of Barbuda. It's one half of the two island nation of Antigua and Barbuda in the Caribbean. And it's seen some big changes. Luxury resorts on the coast, a new airstrip in the center of the island, and a new proposed private residence to the north. All are in development, backed by the central government in Antigua and wealthy outside investors, but opposed by communities on Barbuda looking to preserve their unique system of communal land ownership. Some residents also want to protect Codrington Lagoon National Park, a wetland protected by an international treaty, where two of these projects are ongoing. Newsy spoke with local Barbudans and, working with our partners at Bellingcat, poured over dozens of documents related to the dispute, a dispute that could both impact Barbuda's defense to powerful storms and undermine a global effort to protect vulnerable environments. When looking at Barbuda from the sky, it's hard to miss the large body of water on its western half. This is Codrington Lagoon, and just south of it, Palmetto Peninsula. The entire area of the lagoon, about one-third of the island, was classified as a Ramsar-protected wetland in October of 2005. The Ramsar Convention on Wetlands is an international treaty signed on by 172 countries, including Antigua and Barbuda, meant to conserve key ecosystems in combating climate change. One of the people who helped the lagoon get that recognition is John Mussington a marine biologist and local secondary school principal on Barbuda. The foundation of life on planet Earth is water. And so these wetlands represent the types of ecosystems which is essentially the basis of life. One of the reasons it's protected at such a high level is because the ecosystems and the biodiversity you find in that one spot on Barbuda is found nowhere else in the world. And these areas are the last natural areas where this particular species of palm would grow in abundance. There are species there of plants and animals which we have not quite identified yet. This 2005 designation was vital to protect the wetland's delicate ecosystem, home to large nesting sites and endangered marine flora and fauna. For years, parts of Palmetto Peninsula had been the site of destructive sand mining. And while the mining paused in 2006, it resumed soon after due to Barbuda's desperate need for income. Jacqueline Frank, a member of Barbuda's local government, blamed this partly on the strained relationship between Barbuda and the central government on Antigua. Say they were supposed to give us $10. Now they give us six, sometimes five. So we have to find our own way to raise funds. We have to sell stand in order to compensate for what's been missed out of our budget. In 2007, Barbudans reached another important milestone. The Barbuda Land Act was passed. It codified Barbuda's unique communal land ownership system, legislating that all land in Barbuda shall be owned in common by the people of Barbuda, and no land in Barbuda shall be sold. This kept tourism and commercial development at a sustainable level on the island by requiring major development projects to obtain council-approved land leases. Ten years later, in February 2017, one such lease was signed for land on Palmetto Point. A company called Peace, Love & Happiness wanted to build a luxury beach and golf community on the site, complete with homes, a beach club, golf course, and marina. The idea is to rejuvenate the land previously dug up by the sand mining while also creating a sustainable space to sell hundreds of luxury homes to the ultra-wealthy. All of this would be within the Ramsar site. We walked into a site that was down to 10% of its natural habitat. We're now rebounding that to be over 50%. So wherever we go, we go at painstake to make sure we're giving back to the environment. So these areas are earmarked to be taken out completely leveled replaced with grass. Barbudans like John Mussington were worried about what the development would mean for the historic dunes at the site, which created a buffer protecting the island's one town during any major storms. The beach is a living thing. It grows, it breathes, it moves. The sand is the essence of the life of a beach. When you do anything to the sand, you take sand out of the system, it's like you're taking resources out of the bank. You put the sand into bags, 
to tie up so it doesn't move, those things kill the beach. And with the beach dead, the services that you get in terms of protecting the coastline, that goes as well. Seven months after the lease was signed, one of these major storms hit. In Barbuda, houses underwater, cars floating through the streets. Among the dead, a two-year-old killed while a family was trying to escape. The eye of Hurricane Irma, a Category 5 storm, passed directly over Barbuda and devastated the island. Over 90% of the buildings there are either destroyed or severely damaged at this hour. All of Barbuda's 1,600 or so residents were evacuated to Antigua. Anyone who fails to comply with this mandatory evacuation order will be subjected to the force of the law. It was during the aftermath of this storm that two important developments played out. First, PLH submitted their master plan documents for the resort to Antigua and Barbuda's government. Despite notes that it was incompatible with the ecosystem, it received conditional approval from the nation's Development Control Authority and Department of Environment. This is something that John Mussington says blindsided many Barbudans. So you're going to tell us you have formulated a proposal that has advanced to the stage of being put before DCA and we don't know anything about it and we are the owners of the resource? How can that be fair? How can that be scientific? PLH says it went through the proper steps for approval, including having a vote in November 2016, where 86 people voted to approve the project and two voted against. The Barbuda Council and others say that they weren't given the complete picture, though. There was no, there was no documentation shared beforehand. And in the meeting, there wasn't enough information given beforehand in terms of what was planned for PLH. She elaborated more in a message over WhatsApp, contesting that insufficient details were provided during the vote and that the vote certification wasn't signed by the correct council member. The other key move made after the hurricane? Antigua's central government amended Barbuda's 2007 Land Act. The amendment undermined the central idea of communal land ownership by allowing Barbudans to claim individual ownership over their land. Those forces which always contended with us in terms of our council development, they got an opportunity to, to get a heads up. They began then to impose this concept of development which will depend on investors coming in, taking the land of Barbuda, and then sell these properties to wealthy millionaires. These two actions, the acceleration of development at Palmetto Peninsula and the weakening of Barbuda's unique land laws prompted dual concerns, so Barbuda pushed back. The amendment was challenged in court as Barbuda sought an injunction, but it ended up passing anyways. The bill has been read a third time and passed accordingly. The Land Act was then repealed entirely in 2018, removing the unique protections that Barbudans had attempted to set up for their island's land. While the Barbuda Council's fight to halt development at Palmetto Peninsula is ongoing, a June decision by Antigua and Barbuda's Privy Council allowed development to continue on another part of the island at a place known as Coco Point. That development, backed by U.S. investors, including actor Robert De Niro, was approved by a piece of legislation known as the Paradise Found Project Act, 2015. June's Privy Council decision blocked an attempt by two Barbudan politicians, Trevor Walker and Mackenzie Frank, to challenge the 2015 act. For now, the golf course at Palmetto Point continues to be built, something that can be seen in recent satellite imagery. Despite PLH's promise to adhere to sustainable environmental standards, there's worry that developing Palmetto Peninsula is getting to the point of no return. What PLH is saying in that they are doing good for the environment, it is total nonsense. Imagine 450 homes, an 18-hole golf course. You are seeing natural ecosystems. For you to put a golf course, you have to scrape those off. And you're telling us that you scrape off all that and you're putting back a lawn, a golf course. The sum total of what you're doing is better than what nature created? Come on. No, no. We know better than that, and that is what is at stake right now. In June of 2021, the United Nations sent a letter to PLH 
and its stakeholders with concerns about the ongoing development and how it would impact island necessities like the groundwater and protective sand dunes. In its response to the letter, PLH went on the defense, claiming that sand mining had already ruined the environment and the group was actually restoring it. There's even a quote from John Mussington talking about the disastrous effects of the previous decade's sand mining. When asked about this, John said his principles haven't changed, but that putting a golf course over Palmetto Peninsula is worse because it's impacting a larger area. When you tear up ecosystems, it is a problem because you're destroying what we're seeking to protect. Now, what PLH is doing is far worse than the sand mining that took place earlier. PLH also says that the community response to the project has been overwhelmingly positive and that the group has been completely transparent with the community about the project. Both the council and a legal NGO assisting them, the Global Legal Action Network, dispute this. A recent GLAN letter to PLH stated that environmental impact assessments for projects at both Cocoa Point and Palmetto Point have not been made publicly available. In all, the GLAN letter said eight claims by the PLH in their response to the UN were inaccurate and pointed out that the PLH omitted their involvement with the international airport that's being built on Barbuda. We reached out to PLH and spoke to their project president, but their only response on the record was a written statement detailing the company's work to build new wetlands to offset any environmental impact. We reached out to the central government in Antigua multiple times by email, but did not receive a response before publication. For his part, John says that PLH's claims of restoring the environment amount to what he calls greenwashing. So it sounds good when you speak to the press. You're creating these wetlands. While you're creating, is a hole in the ground with water. So it's wet and it's land. But it's not a wetland ecosystem. That's a big difference. There's also concern over what impact the development will have on the lagoon itself. A statement from the Global Coral Reef Alliance said that any development at Palmetto Point would irreparably alter the lagoon's ecology for the worse. It's yet to be seen whether PLH will be able to keep the delicate ecosystem intact or if the progress made on the golf course and beach club has already irreparably damaged a protected wetland.